Hi, I'm Ann Ganguza, and I'm here with Gary Eberly from Eberly Winery, one of the pioneers in this area. Thank you so much for having us. Ann, it's a pleasure to have you. excited to talk to you today um, because we're kind of East Coasters together. So you got your start back in, you're from Pennsylvania? Originally from the, the Pittsburgh area, one of the mm -hmm. little small steel towns outside of Pittsburgh. And I hear you got a football scholarship to Penn State. Yeah, I was, uh, was fortunate enough that uh, when I was in high school I got to be big and fast and mm -hmm. uh, high school All-American and I had my opportunity, an opt opportunity to go practically anywhere I wanted to. But I wanted to go play for Joe Paterno at Penn State. Wow. Well, I'm a big fan. And so when you went to Penn State, you also studied biology. How did that happen? Uh, well, I, you know, when I was uh, I, growing up, I grew up in a house with the painted plywood floors, and there was no chance that I was going to go to college. I mean, it was just you were, I was going to come out of high school and go to work in a steel mill or a foundry. Um, and biology was always my favorite sport I, and my favorite subject. I was always out in the swamps collecting snakes and frogs, and uh, I was just a critter guy. Because there's a lot of them out there, I know. Yes, there I are. Know. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, I got to Penn State, they asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, well, my hero was my, because my mother and father divorced when I was 18 months old, so uh, my hero was my high school football coach. And I said, well, I'm going to be a high school football coach at and I'm going to teach biology because I like the life sciences. And that's how I evolved into the life sciences. And I got wow. a degree in secondary education uh, at Penn State with a degree in, uh, in biology. biology. Uh, and I thought that's where I was heading until I student taught. And then I... <laughs> the, mm, what is it? Maybe this is not you know, the way I'm supposed to be because I could see myself killing a 10th grader, you know, just. And um, I made a quick foray with the Detroit Lions and they didn't want me and the Marines didn't want me. So I went to graduate school and got a, a master's degree down at LSU in, in zoology, vertebrate zoology, because I was still a critter guy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sort of slowly evolved into genetics and then started a doctorate at Charity Hospital in New Orleans, it was LSUNO at that time, the medical school, in cellular genetics. And I published some papers and had a couple of patents. And while I was at, uh, uh, in New Orleans at Charity Hospital, one of the professors on my committee, he and I both loved opera. When he would come to my apartment, I would serve him the finest wines of the time, you know, Lancers, Blue Nun, Matus. Because you know, in 1970, yep. if you didn't have an empty bottle of Matus right. on your dining room table with a candle in it, you were living in a single wide. You know, so, you know, Matus was the finest wine of the world, mm -hmm. you know, little crackling rosés. And we'd go to his house, and he would serve me 66 Chateau Latour and 61 Duke Rubol Caillou and Lynch Bage and Becheville and Margot's. And um, somewhere along the line, I don't even can't remember what opera or where, but I had an epiphany. And I said, you know what? I now understand what James Bond is talking about. And I don't want to be a geneticist. I want to be an alcoholic. <laughs> So I transferred to, uh, I took my transcripts out to UC Davis and completed my coursework for a second PhD program and was about a third of the way through my dissertation and then got a job in May of 73. And I said, oh, that's, I'll finish my dissertation on the job. You know, it won't mm -hmm. take me but, you know, a few months, I mean, maybe six, eight months, I can do it on it while I'm working. And uh, I'm still about uh, four months away from finishing it. So, <laughs> but I work on it every night. <laughs> and at that point now, you so, so you'd finished and you moved into this area mm -hmm. and started. Yeah, and why Pastor Robles? Uh, yes. <laughs> because uh, one of the things, uh, Dr. Omo, because you know, when you're on a doctoral program, you have five people on your committee, and, and one of them, because my minor was viticulture. And I was fortunate enough to have Dr. Omo on my committee. He's sort of the uh, uh, professor emeritus of uh, viticulture in the United States. 
And uh, he, in conjunction with the Soil Science Department and the Viticulture Department, they were doing soil mapping of the Paso Robles region. And I was their Sherpa. Uh -huh. I carried the shovel, did the digging of the holes, carried all the soil samples. And uh, Dr. Omo, Dr. Ali, Dr. Amory, Dr. Kunke, I mean, almost the entire department were so uh, sure that Paso Robles would be the next great red wine producing region. And they just loved this area. The, the hot, dry days, the very cold nights, long growing season, very little uh, moisture, uh, very poor soils. Mm -hmm. uh, it was everything that they said, you know, this is where the wine industry is going to gravitate to. And, uh, and that was like 1973? 71, oh, okay. 72. Okay. Okay. I came out in 73, May okay. of 73. And I got here and got well established uh, just in time for the white wine revolution. <laughs> and Paso Robles then, <laughs> we treaded water for a decade or more mm -hmm. because suddenly Americans went from drinking rosé and red to drinking white and pink. So how did Everly Winery get started then? Um, I always wanted my own winery, mm -hmm. and I had uh, some real hard equity, but it was very, very small because I didn't have a lot of money. But I had a lot of sweat equity that I traded for positions uh, in the Estrella winery. And uh, when I decided to leave, I went to the, uh, you know, the, the uh, general partner, and I said, look, instead of I'm leaving, instead of me selling my shares back to you, how about letting me buy wine that I made and put it in my bottle with my label and my cork and I will uh, uh, take my equity position out in that form. And it doesn't really cost you guys. You guys come off. It's, you know, I'm, I'm going to be buying it essentially at the hard cost. And they said that's fine because they didn't have to come up with the money. I was happy and I was buying wine, Chardonnay, and Cabernet uh, at $18 a case, uh, finished with my label, everything, and then I was taking it out because I didn't have a winery at that time, but I, I had uh, enough time in the industry and I knew a lot of the distributors and wholesalers that I went out and just started selling at wholesale for $60 a case. Mm -hmm. And I turned $18 into 60 and then that, with a bunch of other partners and a huge mortgage, I was able to put together enough money, certainly undercapitalized, but uh, enough money to build Everly Winery. And that was in 1980? 1983-84. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wow. We opened the doors officially May 20th of 84. So you're truly one of the one of the pioneers of this region. When I came down here, there were three wineries, and they had all been here since before Prohibition. I think one of them, York, was it? Uh, York Mountain, mm -hmm. Pazenti, and Rhoda. Okay. Uh, old, old wineries, and uh, we were the fourth, fifth winery in Paso Robles. And then in 81, 82, I got together with some uh, friends in the industry, and we formed the Paso Robles Appalachian. Uh, I did the meteorology and the geology and, and pretty much drew up the boundaries uh, of the Appalachian and uh, we were, I believe, the sixth Appalachian in the United States at that time. Wow. And uh, we made the, App the Appalachian very large because we wanted to include potentially anybody. We, we needed recognition. We wanted anybody that was even thinking about a grape. Sure. You know, to be included in the Appalachian. And then also in the 70s, uh, I mean, when I came out of Davis, uh, I introduced the varietal Syrah to the United States. I planted the first Syrah vineyards, the first Syrah vineyard, 100% Syrah vineyard ever planted in the U.S., and the first Syrah vines ever planted since before Prohibition. So uh, uh, the, the father of, the, of modern Syrah in the United States. And at one point, all of the Syrah in the United States came from you know, my vines and my cuttings. I sold 
Randall Graham, his first hurrah, Bob Lindquist, uh, Steve Edmonds, you know, uh, a lot of the uh, early Syrah producers. What a history, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has just been fascinating. I really appreciate you inviting us in and, and talking to us today. Oh, well, thank you. It's so good to have you guys. And, you know, we set the table up. We we're going to have this spectacular dinner. And then I found out that they didn't set it up for us, damn it. <laughs> <laughs>